So, <laughs> I haven't uploaded a video in like two weeks and um, I'll save the excuse and just jump into what this video is about. So, this past couple of weeks has just been pretty much shooting weddings left and right, like back to back to back wedding. You can pretty much say a wedding galore. You know, why don't I just call this vlog Wednesday, no, Wedding Wednesday vlog. So today I wanna to talk about the lenses that I used for weddings. By the way, this by no means is the uh, ultimate guide to lenses for weddings. That's not what this video about. This is just what lenses work for me at the weddings that I shoot at. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and start with my most used lens for the weddings that I've shot this month, the Sony 24-70 f2.8 G Master Lens. Now, people have always claimed that this, this range is the perfect run and gun for any types of uh, event coverage situations and all of that, like, and you can, really, you can really accomplish a lot. Uh, I shot a wedding with my friend Jeremy. I was second shooting for him. He's a Canon shooter, um, FYI, and his primary lens is the 24-70 f2.8 version 2. And he got a lot of great photos. And he's accomplished a lot with that range, you know, just shooting mainly with that lens, like everywhere he goes. So you can really do a lot with this lens. For wedding films, I like it because it's convenient. I I hate to admit that it's, it, you know, the range is convenient, but the size and weight is not. So you've heard me complain about the size and the weight of this lens in like a lot of my videos already. But again, the range is just very convenient because at 24, I can be as wide as I can be. And at 70, you know, I can be tight. And with the Sony Alpha cameras, I can use clear image zoom to just like really zoom in and make it to be like about 140. And when I switch to APS-C mode, it can be 200 millimeters. So this effectively can be a telephoto lens. I would definitely recommend the 24 to 70 for anyone who's looking for their first lens for their Sony cameras. It's just, this is perfect. This, this, can, this can do a lot. You can almost shoot an entire wedding, film or photos with this lens alone. All right, moving on to the other spectrum of things. Oh, let me just go ahead and stretch my legs. <sighs> Um, moving on to the other spectrum of things, my least used lens. This is technically my second least used lens, but I wanna, I wanna talk about it, which is the uh, Sony G Master 70 200 f2.8. So for photos, this is great. You know, I love having this um, for like wedding photos, especially when you're shooting ceremony, um, when you have to like be far away and you have to slide down the kiss and the, the ring shot and all of that. This is great. I love this lens, but for wedding films, this can get very cumbersome in my opinion, like especially when you have to like lug a bunch of tripods, you know, set, set up for the ceremony and all that. So unless um, I have to be, I, I'm required to be far away from the couple, then I wouldn't use this lens. I would probably use a different lens, which I'll talk about uh, later. But let's move on to the actual least used lens, which surprised me was the 5518. Now I was kind of, subconsciously, consciously chose not to use this lens if it makes any sense. Um, but this lens would be great for prep shots, for, you know, I, you know what? It can be good for just general shooting, prep shot, first look. This is the perfect all around lens to, to do anything um, when you put it on a full frame camera. With a 1.8 aperture, you're gonna get some really nice bokeh with it. So this is a great lens. Um, I love it, but the reason why I didn't use the 55 all that much was because I really wanted to use the 3514. So 3514, um, you guys heard about my debacle a couple months ago where I, I, you know, I thought about selling this lens, get the 2.8 version instead, or get the 28 millimeter, whatever, because it's a size and complaint. But I actually really learned to love this lens all over again. Like, uh, especially for videos, like when I'm like shooting videos, the 1.4 really just comes in handy. You just like, you can just completely blow out the background with this lens. Sometimes when you're like doing prep um, of the bride and the groom and sometimes they're not really in a, you know, a, a, a nice looking environment, you know, their room could be messy or we're shooting in their house or something like that, you know. Having that 1.4 to just really blow out the background and really just focus on them 
it comes in handy. I love it. And with the 1.4 aperture, it also comes in handy in like low light situations. As you guys know, the a7R2 does not do really well in low light as well as its other counterpart, the a7S2. So having a fast prime like this definitely helps compensate for that. So the 35.14, this is the near perfect lens actually. I can really do a lot with this. Moving on to the lens that I want to use a lot more from now on, the 85G Master 1.4. Now. Quick, just really quickly for the photos, I use this lens a lot for photos. Just love the bokeh, the bokeh. Oh man, I keep, I keep thinking I'm saying it wrong. Bokeh, right? Not bokeh, it's bokeh, it's Japanese. Japanese word, bokeh, bokeh, yeah, bokeh. I love the bokeh that comes out of this lens. I just really love it, you know, photo-wise. I shot probably that day, uh, this is the most used lens for wedding photos. Second one would be the 24 to 70, but the most used for with this one's um, the 85. Um, but I do want to use this a lot more for wedding films. Um, so going back to earlier how I'm saying this can get cumbersome, the 70 to 200. Um, I really want to, if distance was not an issue, I can be close, I can walk around during the ceremony, then I'd probably just use the 85 1.4 because I can just use clear image zoom to make this kind of telephoto. I can really just zoom in. This could be like, what, 170 millimeter or at APS-C mode, it could be like past 200 a little bit. And the reason why I wanna use this a lot more was really inspired by Craig Adams. So if you guys didn't know, I shot behind the scenes for his wedding in LA last week. Yeah, I'll talk more about that later, but you know, if you guys watch his A7S2 review, he mentioned that he used the 85 baddest 1.8 to just shoot the ceremony. You know, he didn't have to bring his giant 7200 around, you know, especially coming from New York to LA, having this small little guy to fit, you know, just a safe space, just to like, yeah, pretty much just a safe space and be quick on, on just be quick on his feet. So for next wedding, if I don't need to be too far away, I'll definitely be bringing the 85 and be using it for ceremonies. All right, so the last lens I wanna talk about is that lens that's attached to the camera, the 16 to 35 F4. Now, the 16 to 35 F4, I like it um, for its, you know, ultra wide, you know, you get like nice exterior shots. Uh, for wedding photos, you get nice exterior shots, nice group photos, especially when there's like a bunch of people in that group. Um, for wedding film, um, when you're, when you're capturing a wide of the ceremony, definitely comes in handy. Wide of the reception definitely comes in handy. But on the A7R2, the F4 just really tanks on you. So unless you have an A7S2, the 1635 F4 may not be the best option. Because again, you know, A7R2 just doesn't really do well in low light. Like for the wedding photos, I wanted to capture a wide of this thing right here, this, this table set of the cupcakes and all of that. But while it was nice to get a wide of that, because I wouldn't have been able to accomplish with the 85 or the 55 at the time, I had to run back to my bag and get the 24 to 72.8 to just get this shot. Granted, it's not the greatest, but at least the 2.8 really comes in a clutch. So the 24 to 70 really saved my butt that night. So yeah, the 16 to 35 definitely will be on me when I'm shooting wedding photos. For wedding photos, Films, um, you know, since I shoot with Eric a lot, he has his 16 to 35 and he's the one who's handling the gimbal stuff. I'll definitely probably just may not bring my 16 to 35. Well, it's up to you, Eric. Just, <laughs> just let me know. But uh, yeah, if I don't have to bring it, I probably wouldn't bring it for wedding when I, whenever I shoot wedding films. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching this <gasps> wedding Wednesday vlog of mine, not weekly Wednesday vlog. So here's my excuse. Here's the reason why I didn't have that episode come out when it was supposed to come out. I had this initial rough cut of my first episode and I was just trying to cut it. I'm just like, man, I just really didn't like it. Like I didn't, I didn't shoot behind the scenes in a way where I can present my, my vlog well enough. So I was just like, forget it. You know, this just looks awful. I was stressing about it way too much. So I decided to be like, whatever, it's just like, I'll, I know I'll have some good content. I'll have some great information after like the three weddings that I've done over the weekend. So I'll wait till those weddings are over and then put together a different video. And I guess this is something that I'm very satisfied with. Just kind of like telling you guys about my lens because I just love talking about gear. So that ended up working out really well. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.